or a tablet or a learning book, if that's what they're calling it, which is under 20,000 rupees. Yes, spoiler alert, this is under 20,000 rupees. We actually want to ask the question whether this is a gimmick Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Business Today Television. Uh, today we have a special guest, uh, and this is to do with the recent uh, uh, demerger and the subsequent uh, listing of uh, NIIT learning systems. Joining us today is uh, uh, Mr. Rajendra Pawar, uh, co-founder of NIIT and chairman of NIIT Learning Systems. Uh, he's no stranger to the Bombay Stock Exchange. Uh, this is his third listing uh, over a span of about 30, 35 years. A very dear friend of mine and uh, both of us have uh, been a part of this wonderful technology-led journey that's happened in India over the past uh, three, three and a half decades. Mr. Pawar, welcome to Business Today Television. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you uh, on this wonderful listing that's happening with NIIT Learning Systems. How does it feel? Feels truly wonderful, uh, Shailendra. So you went down memory lane <clears throat> and as you know, we started NIT in December of 81, makes it 41 years. We listed NIT Limited in 1993, that makes it 30 years. And then we listed, uh, when we demerged the software business, we listed NIT Tech in 2004. But I have to say today uh, is a bit more, uh, should we say, sentimental because it's in the, in the central hall of the Bombay Stock Exchange. And uh, there wasn't a bell in operation when we did the last listing. So the, the bell makes it also a very memorable moment. But it's also a very special moment for us because this is the launch of an entity which has already got a very good momentum, very clear visibility. And uh, so in a sense, we are giving, uh, should we say, the freedom to a new entity to find to accelerate its course and to find its place in the sun. Right. So uh, let me just uh, uh, run over the details uh, as far as the new business is concerned. Uh, we've seen the listing of NI uh, NIIT Learning Systems. Remember, this was a, a demerger with the parent NIIT. Uh, so the shareholders have uh, got shares in the ratio of one is to one. Uh, the listing has been around uh, 363 rupees per share and that values the company somewhere like 4,800 crore rupees. Uh, about uh, uh, 8 lakh shares have been traded so far. And uh, this is a company which has revenues of about 1361 crores uh, and a profit of about 192 crores. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Pawar, you would know this uh, uh, wonderful anecdote that used to uh, be there in the late 1990s and uh, uh, early 2000 that uh, should you be wanting to work with NIIT, uh, you would be needing to grow a beard because all founders, uh, starting from Mr. Pawar downwards to Mr. Thadani, Mr. Uh, Rajendra, all of us, uh, all of them had beards. And uh, of course, uh, it's a shade of uh, uh, a little gray uh, on Mr. Pawar's face now, but that's uh, all wisdom and immense wealth. So let's uh, start the difficult part of the quest, uh, interview, Mr. Pawar. What now from onwards? Where is NIIT Learning Systems headed? Uh, you have a lot of competition that's coming online from the likes of uh, uh, Upgrad, Unacademy, uh, and so many other players like Baiju's. What differentiates you? So first of all, I think uh, different players are in different businesses. So I will say that we are not in the school's education business and we are not in the test prep business. So these we rule out. Then we have NIT Limited, which works on what we call as the skills and career business, where we compete with some of these players like Upgrad. But NLSL is in a very different space. NLSL is the learning outsourcing space where our clients are not consumers. It is the Fortune 1000 and the global 500 companies. And we have 80 of them as our customers. This is an offering, our ticker as you see is NIIT MTS. And I have to say that when it's saying 
363 and minus 10, it is the sum total of NIT limited plus NIT MTS. So I think the yeah. calculations have to be corrected. So you have to add the two if you want to compare with the pre uh, demerger period, but leave that aside. So NIT MTS, which is how it will be listed, NIT learning system, that will be the ticker. That is in the learning outsourcing business where customers in the US, Europe, US and Europe. And these are multi-year, multi-million dollar learning outsourcing contracts. So these, none of the companies that you mentioned as competitors are relevant in this space. We are world number five in the learning outsourcing build business globally. And if you leave out some of the non training entities, if you look at just the learning and development, specialized entities outsourcing, we are number two in the world. So NLSL is on a different course, on a course where we want to pursue global leadership. And in that space, it is, um, as I said, the Fortune 1000 companies, multi-million dollar contracts, multi-year contracts. So. In fact, that different, the reason why also we had to look at the demerger, which we started working on some time ago, was the business, the skills and career business tend to be a B2C, tend to be developing country, India, China, Africa focused. What NIT started with, the learning centers, which we are repurposing, that's a separate discussion. But out of that comes the NIT learning system business, which created this offering called managed trading services. That means you help, you go to companies and say, your training function is unmanaged and we'll help you manage it so you know what you spend and what you get. Yes. That was the genesis. And 2009 was the first customer we had. And today we have more than 80 of the Fortune 1000 companies. And so there, here the pursuit is very different. The geographies are different. The product offerings are different. The customer segments are different and the and the race course is different and we are quite ahead in that and we are aiming for global leadership so i just wanted to make sure that um, okay. the viewers today get clarity on what nlsl is all about and that doesn't get mixed up with many of the uh, activities which are going on in the so-called tech space that's for another discussion uh, wonderful. So, uh, at the moment, the focus is clearly the corporate side of the business uh, and uh, more global in nature rather than the domestic uh, uh, ed tech sector, which actually is a minefield. Mr. Pawar, let's get to the financials. The top line is about 1350 crores. You have a very high EBIT margin of about 23%. Uh, 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 what are the projections from now on? Since you're looking at Fortune 1000, I presume that the uh, the margin expansion uh, there is pretty substantial, uh, as also is the forecast of the top line. Where do you see yourself two years from now? 1350 crores is the top line for FY23 crores, uh, FY23 as far as uh, uh, NIT learning systems is concerned, sir. So let me give you a little context. Uh, the learning, the training business of the corporate world is... Um, very large, 300 billion plus. But trading tends to be a very highly fragmented business, both within companies and then also as an industry. There are no large players, and that's why we said, even with this size, we are in the top five. Also, most of the spend on training is done by companies in-house. So less than 3% or so is outsourced. So first of all, the move towards outsourcing represents a very large growth vector for the medium to long term, right? It's a fragmented market where in the last couple of years, we have renewed every one of our customers. Uh, we have uh, NPS, which is unparalleled, is nine out of 10. And we have you know, the legacy of the company, the platform of the company, the talent of the company to back it so carving out this business to be on a track for global leadership has been one of the reasons because we need to give agility to this company to, to play in that space. Now, till about, I think, four years ago, three to four years ago, we were talking, we were at 15% growth, 15% margin kind of play for this, this division at then, corporate learning. 
and we were then saying that we'll have to we'll bring it to 20% growth 20% margin which it has been for the last couple of years and we see that as a near term medium term medium term i would say near term there's too much turbulence in the world we should disregard that in our we now look at 40 42 years of history so not one quarter two quarters and in any case as you know the board meetings are this week so i have to be mindful but looking at their medium to long term large space highly underpenetrated companies looking at the value of outsourcing we are in the top 5 with an aspiration to be a global leader so in the in the medium to medium plus term we are looking at going being north of 20% and 20% as a guideline and then of course we have to see with generative ai the offering that you're looking at here and of course turbulence has its ups and downs downs are the market is confused but the up for us at least in our history i can say that there've been three or four periods of discontinuity in our sector and when we look back at those we can see the market changed and we did come out stronger every time so we are looking forward to a similar surge going forward as things settle okay uh, Mr. Pawar, let's look at the geographic uh, distribution of business when it comes to uh, NIT learning systems. Uh, I would presume uh, the American geography remains the cornerstone of uh, uh, both the top line and the bottom line. Would you uh, care to uh, share how many clients you have as of now? I think uh, you did mention 80. And how are they spread geographically? I wouldn't have the exact numbers, but we would look at a more detailed conversation as we go forward. But I did mention that the very first of these was in 2009. And then we crossed 10 and then we crossed 50. And now this year we have crossed 80 customers. But yes, a little under two thirds is the US. And then the rest is many parts of Europe, largely a handful of customers in the um, Australasian area as well. But the the larger focus is the Americas. That is where the large, larger focus has been. And of course, we are okay. growing now in various parts of Europe, in the EU. And we are looking at some new areas, like when we look at the, um, the whole climate change, decarbonization space, where the EU is taking a lead. We are also getting mm -hmm. into stronger positions. And we see growth in the medium term, not today, but in the next three to five years. We see that as going to be a big contributor because the EU is very strong in that space. So we we, we currently are that kind of spread. A uh, uh, lot, lot in the US and coming up in, in oh. the European uh, area. Uh, Mr. Pawar, uh, since you've uh, been the pioneer in terms of uh, setting up uh, the Indian uh, uh, IT industry space, both in terms of education as well as software industry, uh, software uh, uh, outsourcing of software services. How different is it now? Uh, you know, we we were uh, uh, disparagingly referred to as uh, 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 a shopper of uh, uh, you know bodies when it comes to uh, the software sector. But now, of course, everything is online and the primary media of, of education is uh, uh, the internet. Uh, when you talk about geographic expansion, uh, it would also mean adding to manpower, existing manpower strengths. Uh, would you care to share uh, what is the current uh, uh, manpower strength of uh, NIT learning systems and maybe how it would stack up two years from now? So let me say the following. Uh, while our customers are global, a lot of the delivery is done out of India, number one. Number two, yes. while internet is becoming more important for learning, we do know that if you want very concrete transfer of skills, a very important part of it is beyond digital, or it may be synchronous, but it's not like recorded stuff being played off, which is for free now, that anybody can get for free. But the transfer of learning is not just about viewing content. So our services do include content and curriculum development, but so also is learning delivery, a very important service, as is learner administration. If a company has hundreds of thousands of employees or any of our clients, 
then managing the process of every one of them learning according to their individual learning plans and ensuring that the companies get outcome that still has a huge amount of component of interaction people to people um, and then we have to remember that with generative ai we do expect productivity of people to go up and comes to areas like content development or when it comes to evaluation and assessment but this business will always continue to have people at at all the crucial points and so our 3000 odd people the number will grow we don't expect radical reduction, reductions because the service component the service delivery component is where the real value is created to make sure that a person who's working on a task can demonstrate their ability to do the task better so there's a difference as we've always said from day one since we formed right. nit we are not in the teaching business we are in the learning business the control is with the learner all of us are people we never use the word faculty they're learning coordinators from day one when we started using video as a medium so we we've, we've dabbled with the interplay of technology mm -hmm. and people and the new 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 uh, balance which has to be created we just feel confident that we know that better than most other players but that has a human element which is very important when you look at learning outsourcing to deliver guaranteed learning to every one yeah. of the learners who's on the platform right uh, Mr. Pawar, let's uh, sort of expand the purview of this discussion and uh, to my mind, uh, there is no better person than you uh, who would, uh, uh, you know, uh, comment uh, with great degree of command at uh, uh, oneself. Uh, the future of artificial intelligence uh, uh, in uh, corporate as well as global India. Uh, there is this rampant fear that uh, uh, humans will be replaced by machine learning and uh, large scale job losses uh, will result because of artificial intelligence which part of the argument which side of the argument are you on so shelin you asked me an important question and i'm sure you've asked me this important question that earlier pivotal moments in the history of technology in fact when we started and we said bringing people and computers together successfully if you had asked me what's going to happen I would be fooling myself if I said I know exactly what's going to happen. But we had some predictability. Then came India's moment in 1991 when the whole globalization process started. I was involved in the industry association also at that time. And we were asked this question routinely yes. of what will this do to? And again, we were in a very uncertain and to me, a very exciting place because there's so much is unknown. Then the dot-com bust happened. 10 years later. That was a terrifying moment for the whole world when we thought that Y2K is going to happen at a certain date and soon after that the dot-com happened. Very uncertain times. Once again, when we look yes. back at that time, we think we innovated extensively. We were not very clear of what exactly is going to happen. And then the Lehman moment. I think all of us know that as well. The world was collapsing. But I think what I've, yes. what I've learned in this period is that these changes will come at us. They'll probably come at a higher frequency and they will look more uncertain. And my, my conclusion at, at the end of all is this, that you just have to embrace the change. Don't go away from it. Don't look the other way. Just embrace it. So now to your question, AI, what does it mean? So you also know this, that this is not the first time that AI has been a source for great, great discussion. It's probably the third wave. But this time it's more serious because everybody's connected. We have powerful devices in our hands. There's unlimited amount of memory and computation speed is very high. So this time more will happen with the idea of AI than has happened before. And um, I don't worry as much about where will people be, what will they do when AI hits. We'll have to adapt. There will be in the near term, many sectors will get affected because some jobs can be done through automation more easily. We've seen that happen in the business process management space. How we had to remove many people who were doing routine tasks and put them, replace them with programs. That is happening. Here the issue is that AI, generative AI seems to be a part of the imagination of everybody from a school going child to an elderly person who wants medical advice. 
so the 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 vast swaths of changes all good for humanity those who run away from it have a problem and i remember famously a chief scientist saying many years ago he was asked that will computers replace teachers and he said every teacher who thinks so should be replaced i thought that was a very telling comment i will say the same for ai we have we have have real intelligence all those who are giving more important to artificial intelligence are doing it at great risk to themselves so productivity improvements algorithms heuristics logical reason will be able to democratize many of these things but then you have to sit on top of the tiger you see have to sit on top of the horse embrace ai and life becomes life becomes easier so no less turbulent than what's happening in europe in terms of the war far less turbulent than what covid did to us hmm. but this too shall pass and this we shouldn't let it pass we should embrace it so i i don't agonize too much after having seen many tough moments in the past but to say that we should embrace it we should see what it can do for us and be prepared for some jolts as we go along what oh, Uh, it was a pleasure speaking to you mr pawar and uh, uh, listening and understanding the sheer breadth of uh, uh, mastery that you have uh, on the subject of information technology congratulations once again uh, for the third listing of your group which is nit learning systems uh, we wish you all the best on this wonderful journey and uh, hopefully we'll meet uh, fairly soon in delhi and uh, recollect all the wonderful times uh, we had uh, while tracking the parent nit uh, before the dot com boom uh, during the boom and of course uh, uh, as of now thank you so much for your time I have a nice day we have many conversations to do and we can go into the nitty gritty which i know you love to look at and that's for another set of meetings including for nit limited where there's yes. a major re reengineering and transformation so we yes. look forward to those conversations <laughs> Thanks always, Shelly, Helen, for being around and watching us closely and and engaging yeah. us in conversation. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Uh, it's also been a fantastic journey at my end, as far as the NIT group is concerned. Uh, it has been a great learning experience. Uh, uh, perhaps this was my first company that I tracked in terms of equity research, and uh, it's paid rich dividends to. shareholders who've continued holding the stock thank you so much for your time sir and uh, that will be all as far as uh, bt tv is concerned for as of now uh, do stay tuned for the best market action the best corporate developments and uh, where the markets are headed uh, with bt tv thank you for joining us everyone you've tuned into business today tv and i'm akanksha and today on our show we are joined by stephanie shiraz she is the senior vice president at red hat's partner ecosystems thank you so much for joining us today stephanie oh it's my pleasure thank you for the opportunity to be with you and we're so sorry we had to wake you up so early it's around 7 a.m in new york and i don't want to bother you a lot so let's just dive into the questions uh, great so So my first question to 